Hi, my name is DeAndrea, and welcome to The Real News. I'm the author of the book Kidnapped. I want to tell you a little bit about this story. I'm also a certified paralegal. I'm a licensed notary. And uh, I will be writing another book. Uh, it'll be Kidnap Part 2. It will be roughly about 500 pages. I'm going to infiltrate photographs of the players involved in the largest conspiracy to cover up the sex abuse of a child. This has been in the newspapers. This is the first time it was ever done. It was done by a paper called Our Town, and uh, they reported on the sexual abuse. The largest article that wrote on the story was in the Village Voice, and that was done in 2006. And if you notice, they, uh, I'm holding up a sign with a photograph. I'll show you what that photograph is. And now that the Village Voice has gotten this photograph out, it's all over the internet. If you Google uh, my name, Deandria, D-Y-A-N-D-R-I-A, -A, you will be able to read the article and you will find much, much more uh, information. As proof that this is a cover-up and a conspiracy, um, I have here copies of the State Central Register. Now the State Central Register is when somebody abuses a child, they are listed on it. So uh, here they have uh, the perpetrator, the sexual abuser, he lives on Dare Road in Selden, Long Island. Dare Road, D-A-R-E. They have his real address listed, they have his real birthday, they have his real telephone number, but it says here Jerry Moore. His name is not Jerry Moore. It's not even close to Jerry Moore. So they gave him a fake name on the State Central Register. It says here it's substantiated that he's a sexual abuser of his child. But again, it's a fake name. And everybody involved in this uh, knows that the name was fake. Our judges, Gloria Sosa Lintner, Susan R. Larrabee, Helen C. Sturm, John A. Milano, uh, Patricia Satterfield, Pearl Corrado. Lawyers involved are Ronald Richter, Nina Gross. Nina Gross works for the Broch uh, firm. Ronald Richter is now employed by the Administration for Children's Services. It's a very dangerous job for pedophiles to be working for children's services. And we know that Ronald Richter has to be a pedophile because he protected the pedophile. I'll show you some pictures now. Uh, this is the one that the Village Voice published. This is a picture of the uh, pedophile caught masturbating in bed with his child. Here is a picture of the pedophile uh, in bed with his child at a different time. And if you note closely, the child is protecting her vagina because she knows that daddy is going to be doing something to her. So we've got these photographs. And the uh, pedophile is telling his friends, oh, the photographs are doctored. They're fake. No, they're not fake. We have the Village Voice would have never been able to print that photograph of him caught masturbating in bed with the child if the photographs were fake. Uh, we do have the negatives. Yes, we do. I have here the medical report where he had ruptured the child's hymen. I have here the child's kindergarten uh, report card. The kindergarten report card is important in this case, but let me remind you that exculpatory evidence was concealed and or ignored. So all of this was ignored. But the, uh, the pedophile lived in the marital home during the first half of the child's kindergarten year. After he was served with divorce, the child's grades in every single subject went up dramatically. And also the teacher notes 
uh, on the second half of the report card, DeAndrea has opened up and feels comfortable verbalizing her feelings and thoughts. Now this is not normal for a child going through a divorce if daddy was the good guy and mommy was the bad one. If mommy was the bad one, if mommy was not taking good care of her child, it would be quite the opposite. The child would have been depressed and in need of the good parent. So the report card says it all. And in first grade, the teacher remarks that she is such a happy child. So here's a letter from attorney uh, Steinberg. Steinberg. I must also tell you that your husband's attorney indicated that he is contesting the paternity of the child. Now this was also ignored by the court. Now how could you ignore that? It's very clear that the, that the father did not want to pay child support and he was denying it was his child. Do you think the child knows about this? I don't think so. I have here a copy of the Law Journal from March 7, uh, 2007. and. There's Judge Judith Kay, who's confirmed uh, to be the chief judge again. And I'm sitting back here uh, because I'm supporting her. And why am I supporting her? Uh, she sends scouts throughout the state of New York to get the five most egregious cases, court cases, to show that the courts need to be consolidated. And out of those five cases, yes, the DeAndrea Durrell case was one of them. Um, on page 43, she writes the history of this case. In 1995, I filed for divorce from my abusive husband on the grounds of cruel and inhumane treatment in the Queens County Supreme Court. My husband was infuriated over my initiating the divorce action and even more outraged over my seeking meager maintenance and child support payments. In retaliation and in order to escape his responsibility to support our daughter, my husband stooped so low as to go on record in Supreme Court to deny paternity of our daughter, his only biological child. After the Queens County judge finally ordered DNA tests, DNA te testing, my husband dropped the issue. He knew it was his child because we had artificial insemination. God didn't want him to have children. I should have known. Next, my husband tried a second scheme to avoid paying child support. He called the child abuse hotline to report that I was abusing our daughter. Presumably, my husband figured that having our daughter placed in state custody would free him of child support payments. And it did. He kept her locked up for five years. The resulting abuse and neglect proceedings were heard in Manhattan Family Court and went on simultaneously with the divorce proceedings in the Queens County Supreme Court. In Supreme Court, my husband convinced the judge to deny me the meager maintenance I was requesting on the basis that I was very intelligent and highly capable of procuring any fine job that I sought. In family court, however, my husband painted a completely different picture of me for the purpose of preventing my, me from regaining custody of my child. Because if I had custody of my child, he was afraid he was going to have to pay child support. He told the judge that I was a drug addict and seriously mentally disturbed. On account of these lies, a family court judge granted custody of my daughter to her sexually abusive father, holding that he was the better choice. Yet, in Queens County Supreme Court, had a voluminous case file containing evidence of his lies and manipulation. No reasonable person would claim that the picture that the Supreme Court had of my husband was one of a good dad, yet the family court never heard the side of the story and was convinced by his lies and manipulation to grant him custody of my daughter. I have not seen my daughter since the year 2001.